It looks like Toyota Motor Philippines has no plans of slowing down this year. Fresh off the launch of the all-new Xenix, it's now back with another big model. Well, okay, not literally big. It's the all-new Eagle. The all-new Eagle looks like a beefed-up version of its predecessor, but it still has a familiar silhouette. It's still got the trapezoidal grille below, with a sharp-looking bumper underneath. It does have thinner and sleeker headlights though, paired with these vertical DRLs. On the sides, it has new door handles, a rounded out fuel tank lid, and new 16-inch monotone alloy wheels. You'll see most of the changes out back, where the Wego now has subtler taillights but with a busier hatch design. The old model had a flat lift gate, while here in the new one you'll see a lot of lines and edges. The rear bumper now also has these pointy bits to mimic the front end. Overall, it kinda looks like a mini race to me. Inside, the Wego now also has a busier dashboard design. Toyota kinda wanted to have some texture on this otherwise flat plastic panel, hence this pattern. Actually, this interior reminds me of the Razor's cabin. You also now have new seats with adjustable headrests up front. The center console has a new layout, and it looks like it can hold a lot more stuff than ever. The gear shift lever is still a bit low to the floor, and a bit past that, there's some space for your smartphone and probably other small items. As for cargo capacity, we will do a proper trunk space test for this one soon enough. The all-new Wego is powered by a 1-liter 3-cylinder gasoline engine that's now mated to a continuously variable transmission. The thing is, Toyota Motor Philippines didn't give us the figures just yet, but right off the bat, I can really feel the difference with this new gearbox. You would think it's a CVT, it's kinda laggy, but actually it's not. It actually feels pretty smooth. Compared to the old Wego, of course, it still is a three-cylinder, so it's still rattly when you're idling. But when you're from a standstill and you step on the throttle, the response is just, it's pretty good. And it feels torquey, actually. However, we are only driving this around a few blocks today, so we can't really say for sure just how good that new gearbox and new engine combo is going to perform on the highway. What I can tell you, though, is, well, if you try to floor it a bit, you will still feel that engine grunting. Ride comfort is still pretty much the same, though I have to say NVH levels are better than expected inside this cabin. Steering, it's not electronic yet, so it's light, but it's not electronic power steering light. Other first impressions, driving position is, it's okay. It's a small cabin after all, but you do have height adjustment for the driver's seat. No telescopic adjustment for the steering wheel, but you do have tilt adjustment, so that's okay. Everything is still within reach. It is a small car after all. You have head unit controls here on the steering wheel. The infotainment system is now a bit higher up, but it's still facing the driver a bit. It's angled a bit here. You have buttons for the volume. And underneath, here below, you have the AC panel, which still has a lot of buttons. No touchscreen here. As far as prices go, the base J variant with the manual gearbox costs 609,000 pesos. The mid E variant with the CVT costs 684,000 pesos. This top spec G variant, no GRS available, goes for 729,000 pesos. That's about all we can tell you right now because, again, we just had a very, very quick drive with this one. But we are very much looking forward to trying this out on public roads, so watch out for a full review.